The almighty invisible God has revealed himself to us in a very specific, concrete person, a Jewish man born in a remote region called Galilee several thousand years ago. And he's the person who changed history. Well, tonight, um, tonight I know that um, it's not a night that you would have um, reason to... This is kind of cool. You're actually seeing my face lit up in the candles. Is that working? I didn't know how you didn't time that. No. So, uh, uh, David there. Tonight, I thought we would just kind of relish a story that, while simple, actually helps us to think about what this means and what it means, not for just today, but for the rest of our lives. So the story is about a man called Papa Panoff. Now, I had never heard this story. I've never heard it. I'm sure some of you would have heard it, but I found it just this week, and I was fascinated with it, and I'd like to paraphrase it for you. So it was Christmas Eve, and it was, it was in the afternoon in the wintertime. This is in northern Europe, and so the light was very low. And in this little village, the lights began to come on in this late afternoon of Christmas Eve. Old Papa Panov stepped out at the little village and all the people who were starting to find their homes. And as the lights were coming out and it was getting more dark, he, though he had a cheerful face, though he had laughter wrinkles and spectacles and his face, light, his face would light up, he looked very, very sad. And he, he put down the shutters in his little house there in the village and he went inside he started up the charcoal stove and he made himself a pot of coffee and he settled into the armchair. He was sad because his wife was no longer with him and his children had grown up, which is natural for someone to feel lonely. Now, pa now um, Papa Panoff was not one to read a whole lot. And yet this was Christmas Eve, so he got down the family Bible and he opened it up, he took his finger, and he began to read over the familiar story that we just heard from the Mosley family. And as he read it and remembered it, how, of course, Mary and Joseph were tired for their journey and there was no room for them, um, and how Mary's little baby had to be born in equivalent of a cow shed, he, he began to really emotionally enter into this. And he said, oh, oh dear, if they came here, I would give them shelter. I would, I would put my quilt blanket and I'd give them my bed and give them that patchwork quilt. And then he read on. He went to Matthew's gospel where it talks about the wise men. Matthew talks about the magi. And how they brought these wonderful gifts that we hear about, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And he thought, well, what would I give him if he were to come here? And it's kind of bothered him. And then he realized he had this little set of shoes he hadn't sold. He went and got down the box from the top shelf. He pulled out the little leather shoes and he said, if Christ came to me, I would be able to give him these shoes. So he read a little more. And then as his eyes began to dance on the page and he began to get sleepy, he, um, he fell asleep. And then while he was asleep, he had this dream and there was somebody who came into the room in the dream and you know how when you have a dream that you know who people are even though you're not necessarily supposed to know who they are well Jesus spoke to him in this dream and he somehow he he knew that it was Jesus and the voice he was more of a presence he didn't actually see the man Jesus but he had this it was his presence and his voice and he and he knew that it was Jesus what he heard from him was, um, you've been wanting to see me all your life, and you're alone. So tomorrow, I'm going to grant your wish. I'm going to come to you. I'm going to come and visit you. And you will see me. And you will have the joy of knowing that I have come into your house. Well, he asked in the dream, you know, how will I know who you are? And then at that point, 
the Christmas bells rang. He woke up and he realized it's Christmas Day. The light streams were coming to the shutter and he woke up expectant and he stoked up the coal furnace. He put on the coffee. He opened up the shutters again and he looked outside to see if possibly there was something to that dream. And he looked and he looked and it was deserted. People were staying in their homes. They were probably sharing Christmas presents in families. There was really nobody there, but he, he looked across and down the way. There was the old man that was the street sweeper. And he was doing his job back in this little village in northern Europe. So he looked around to see if Jesus might be there. But his eyes kept going back to that figure because he looked so cold and miserable. And so he, he beckoned him and said, come on, come on, come into the home, come into my house, have some coffee, warm yourself, spend some time with me. And the street sweeper came in and they shared together. They sat down and, and the street sweeper warmed his hands on the stove. He, he, he wrapped his fingers around the warm mug and they talked. But he, but he noticed, the street sweeper noticed that Papa Panov kept looking out the window, or kept looking like he was expecting something. So, and so he said, what, what, what are you looking for? And he said, well, you're going to think I'm crazy, but I had this dream that our Lord Jesus told me he was going to visit me today. And so I'm, I'm, I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm looking. And so uh, the street sweeper said to him, well, I hope he comes to you. I hope he makes himself known to you because you deserve a special blessing because you've been so good to me. You've welcomed me into your home. I hope your Christmas wish comes true. And he departed. Papa Panov looked, looked. No one around, he closed the door. He went and made himself some cabbage soup. He slowly ate the cabbage soup alone. By this time it was getting to be late morning. Thought he'd look again. So he, he opened up the door and he looked out. And there was one solitary figure coming up the winding street, hugging the shops, kind of walking along the edge, kind of huddled against the wind, using the buildings as a block for the wind. And he, he couldn't tell who this was, so he looked. And then he realized when the figure came closer, it was a woman, a young a girl, really. And he, and he noticed that she looked so very tired and sad. And she was carrying this, this package. She was walking along. So when she came closer, he recognized she had a baby wrapped up in there. So he called out to her. And he said, you're cold. Come on in. At least have some coffee and warm up. And so she welcomed his hospitality. She came in. And he said, can I take the baby? I used to have a certain way I used to feed my children when they were babies like this. And so he took the baby and um, he also took some warm milk. He you know, heated the milk up and he had a spoon and he would hold the baby up and let the little bit of milk slide in her mouth. And the, the little feet of the baby were cold and so he held the baby in such a way the fire could warm her while he fed her the milk. And uh, he said, she needs some shoes. And the young woman said, I can't afford shoes. My husband, um, I, I have no husband. And um, there's no one to bring me money. In fact, I'm on my way to the next village because I think there's work there for me. And so Papa Panov thought, he said, I need to give this baby these shoes. So we got him down, gave the shoes to the baby. The woman was so very grateful and said, thank you so much. And she went on her way. So it was getting late in the afternoon. He looked out once more. He saw people who were coming and going. He saw beggars who were recognizable. And he went and got, went in the house and got them some bread and gave it to the beggars. 
And as the light was starting to go down, he, he, he looked and, and, and he saw no one who looked unusual. They were all people that he knew. So by that time, he realized that it was just a dream, just a dream. So as it was getting dark, he closed up the home, boarded up the shutters. He went back in, started preparing for bed. He got back in his chair and he thought for a long, long time. And then in his exhaustion, he fell asleep. He, well, he, he thought he was going to fall asleep, but actually before he fell, fell asleep, suddenly he began to see the faces of the people that had come through his life that day. And then that familiar voice, I came to you and you welcomed me. I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was lonely and you shared your time in your ear with me. And then he realized that it wasn't a dream. That God had visited him. That Jesus, God's son, had visited him. And it was a great peace and happiness that settled over him. Joy filled his heart. It overflowed. He wanted to sing and dance. He wanted to tell somebody that he did come after all. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have come to earth in history. At a certain point in time, about 2,000 years ago, Heavenly Father, you, you dispatched your Son, the Eternal Son, the Prince of Heaven, who was born human, born of flesh, born of a woman so that we could be adopted as your sons and daughters. And Lord God, you've, you've come in such a way that you were committed to remain present with us. And even though our ancestors conspired to kill Jesus, in your sovereign plan, you delivered him to life you raised him from the dead, and he, as a living presence, through the, your Holy Spirit's power, is with us now. We are not alone. We are never alone. Which gives us great peace when we remember. And it also makes us expectant, because often the way that you remind us of your presence is when we do the things that Jesus did. When to those who are lonely or saddened or confused or hungry or naked or just lost. You bring them into our lives and having learned a little bit of what it means to follow Jesus, we try to step outside our fear and self-centeredness and to be kind and helpful and you make yourself known. We praise you. That once you arrived on earth, you determined to be with us forever. So as your people, we pray for ourselves. We pray that you help us to take the small steps and be a little bit more faithful so that like Papa Panov, we can experience what it means to be awakened by love. And Lord, as your people, we also pray for our corner of the world, starting with the people we know and love in our families, in our church family. We ask God that for the children of Susan Smith, this young woman who died of a seizure in the Greater Heights apartment this past week, leaving three children in a devastated community that while we will continue to question why you allow such suffering till the moment we see you face to face, we come back to putting our trust in that you love us too much to let go of us in death. 
And so we ask that you help us respond as your people to this family that has lost this mother and daughter and that we would be Christ to them. We also ask God that Barbara, who led us in worship while is battling cancer, that she would have full and complete healing, full and complete healing, Father, from the cancer that is in her body. We pray for Ralph and Patty Scanelli and David and Sharon Varco. And he prays you that David is here with his family tonight. We ask for both these wonderful couples that as they face this difficult chapter of their lives, they would have your strength and your guidance and your provision. We pray for John Young, a friend for many of us, as he prepares for surgery, that you give him health. We also pray for the world around us, for our nation, for peace and stability in this time of political transition. We pray most of all that our neighbors in our nation and the world would discover the life-changing reality of Jesus. And on this night when we remember how Jesus' parents were forced to make a risky journey because of government oppression and war, we pray for refugees. We ask that prosperous nations would be both generous and wise in responding to this humanitarian crisis. And we will always ask that your reign of peace and justice be realized for everyone. Lord, we pray these things as Jesus teaches his disciples. And so as we remember the words, we share them together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.